Man, that was an awesome praise and worship service, wasn't it? Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Well, turn and greet two or three of your neighbors, and you may be seated tonight. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Isaiah 48 and verse 17. We've been talking about making the necessary adjustments to be able to receive divine directions from God. And how many of you know we are living in a day and a time where if we ever needed divine directions, we need divine direction, amen? Uh, I told you before that this whole season is gonna be about uh, these two extremes. It's gonna either be uh, radically good or radically bad, but you're gonna have to make a decision which side you're gonna be on, amen? We choose to be on the radically good side, amen? <laughs> Praise God. Now, we've been talking about these adjustments. Uh, so far, we've talked about that if you want to receive divine directions, number one, you must be born again. Why? Because as covenant children of God, he can lead you when you become a covenant child of God. A spiritually dead man cannot perceive the things of God, so you have to be a, a, a spiritually alive. And, you know, God is speaking all the time. Uh, he is speaking to people who can't hear him. He is speaking to people who hear him but won't obey him. And then he's speaking to people who will hear him and obey. But God's speaking. I don't want us to be in a position ever when God is speaking, but you can't hear him. Or when God is speaking and, you know, you, you didn't obey him. And so we're, we're talking about making the necessary adjustments, like you used to adjust your antenna on the roof to make the adjustment so you can receive the transmission. God is always talking. The issue is, and the question is, are you in a position to hear from him? Amen? And let me say tonight, if you hollering while I'm talking, you ain't going to be able to hear from me, so adjust your transmission. <laughs> Amen. Adjust your transmission. I ain't doing that tonight. You need to hear me so you can understand, because in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. We ain't playing church. So you need to listen, get it, walk out of here, know what to do. So when the devil show up, you can say, you better be careful. I know God. Amen? And so listen to me very carefully with this. So you, you've got to be born again. People who are not born again, they're expecting to hear from God. It doesn't work like that. I mean, spiritual things to a person that's spiritually dead, it, you don't make the trans, trans, transmission. Second thing we talked about is meekness. So if you're going to make an adjustment in your life so you can receive divine direction, learn about meekness. And meekness is that person who, number one, has self-control. He is a humble person in spirit, and he is teachable. And so Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. And so Moses wrote that about himself. And yet Moses was able to receive divine directions from God. Moses was able to receive when God needed to lead them through the wilderness. Moses was able to receive it. Why? Meekness was an adjustment that he made in his life so that he could receive from God. Okay? And so the third thing we talked to you about was faith. It's going to require faith for divine direction. You got to believe that God is going to provide you with the direction. And so when you don't know what's going on in life and things are not happening the way they should be happening, you have to release your faith and say, you know what? I believe that God is going to lead me. I believe that God is going to direct me. I believe that it's faith that makes a man seek God for divine direction. And then those rewards will come as a result of that. And then number four, we talked about the fourth adjustment, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows everything. He'll lead and guide you into all the truth. But there are a lot of people who limit the Holy Spirit to a jerk or a jiggle. And the Holy Spirit is much more than a jerk or a jiggle. The Holy Spirit has been sent to lead us and to guide us. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to show us things to come. Amen? He is your unseen partner. 
and he wants to lead you down the path so that you can see the will of God for your life. And I believe uh, we got this far yesterday, last week. I think we, we dealt with the quiet spirit, quietness, how important it is for you to have a quiet spirit. In other words, it's going to be difficult for you to hear from God and receive divine directions when you're so cluttered with the affairs of the world. I mean, you're, you're cluttered with somebody else's drama. You're, you're carrying around the cares of the world. You're worrying about all of this kind of stuff. And, and, and to add on to that, what they have on the news and, and baby need to pass shoes, and it's difficult to hear from God when you're cluttered. You have to start believing God for a quiet spirit, a spirit that says, you know what, my peace my peace is my most valuable asset. And next week, I'm going to talk to you about that, how Satan is after your peace by, by, by filling your mind with a bunch of stuff. And so believe God for a calm spirit, a quiet spirit. In fact, I declare over you tonight a spirit of ease come over your life right now. So you'll hear a lot of cares and you'll hear a lot of people's drama, but you know what? You trust God even for them and say, you know what? It's going to be all right. And they're going to be amazed because you walk with a spirit of ease. Say out loud, I have a spirit of ease in my life. Amen. And you know your peace is a valuable asset. So don't let, don't let anybody have your peace. When, when your peace is under attack and it's being challenged, and this is good for a relationship. Somebody says, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be with this person. If you're with somebody and it's costing you peace, you need to cut that off right now. That is a toxic relationship, Amen. Your peace will guide you like an umpire. The Bible says, let peace rule in your heart like an umpire. What does an umpire do? He calls it safe or out. He calls it a striker or a ball. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you like an umpire, praise God. And when the umpire says it's out, then you need to be out. Amen? Praise God. And so tonight, I'm going to pick up with uh, the, the sixth adjustment we need to make. But before I deal with the six adjustment we need to make, I, I, why am I even talking about this? What's, what's the motivation behind me teaching this message? In other words, how is this going to benefit me? I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you about making adjustments so you can receive divine directions. What's the benefit of receiving divine directions? Can I give you four benefits real quick? Before I do that, I told you to turn to Isaiah 48, 17 because this is so important for you to understand that God only leads a man into a profitable path for your life. So when we talk about divine directions, it is divine directions that will take you to a profitable path, path in your life. God only leads you into a profitable path in your life. So God's not going to show up just to be talking to you, just talking to you. He's going to take you to a place of profit, praise God. How many of y'all ready for a profit in your life? All right, look what he says in Isaiah 48 and verse 17. He says, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to what? To profit how? Which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go. So God says, number one, I'm going to teach you to profit by leading you in the way you should go. I'm going to teach you to profit by leading you in the way you should go. So it's the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It's divine directions that's gonna, gonna show you where your profit is. You know, it's time out just kind of going around in circles for the next five, 10 years of your life. God says, I will teach you how to profit, how? By leading you in the way that you should go. So you need to pause and say, Lord, lead me in the way I should go. In fact, say that right now, Lord, lead me in the way I should go. How many of you believe God will give you divine directions to show you where you should go? All right, so that's, that's the first thing I want you to see. But what are the benefits of divine directions? I mean. You're teaching on this, what are the benefits? Benefit number one, you will enjoy protection. You will enjoy not just protection, but you're going to enjoy angelic prote protection. Go to Exodus chapter 23, verse 20, 22 through 23. Exodus 23, and, and I'm telling you right now, you will enjoy when you get to, listen, when God begins to direct your life, the devil better back up. He is going to send you escorts to the place where you're supposed to be. And look at this, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. He says, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That's powerful. He says, I sent an angel to keep you in the way and to bring you in the place that he's prepared for you. Now look at verse 22 and 23. Verse 22 says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, 
then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. In verse 23, he says, for, for my angels shall go before thee and bring thee into unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Preserites and the Canaanites and the Havites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. In other words, the devil better be very careful about interrupting, we, interrupting you while you are on the path of divine direction. Because when you receive divine direction, you receive angelic support. When you receive divine direction, you receive and enjoy angelic protection. There is no force in hell that can stop a man who has discovered the plan of God for his life and is pursuing it as angelic forces are on hand to fight on your behalf to cut off any adversary that dares to come near you. Praise God. Amen. So don't ever be afraid to get on a plane when you know that God has a, a, a mission for your life. There ain't no airplane going to crash nowhere with you on it because you will enjoy angelic protection. Amen? Praise God. Here's the second benefit of divine direction. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.24. The second benefit of divine direction, and I just kind of said it a little bit, God backs you up. God backs you up. I want divine direction because I want God to back me up that no matter what happens, no matter who comes against you, no matter who's talking about you, let me tell you something. A benefit of divine direction is God will back you up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 24. Now, notice what he says here. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. He says, faithful is he that calleth you. So he said he's, he's the, you, you can depend on him to call you, but watch this, who also will do it. So God is faithful. Somebody say, God is faithful. Say, God is faithful. God is behind the execution of every divine plan in a man's life. Every divine plan, God is behind every divine plan. There's a difference between fighting a man versus fighting a plan. And when the devil starts trying to fight the plan of God for your life, he's fighting God. And when you discover where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing, you don't have to worry about the devil trying to interrupt if he is trying to touch you, he's going to have to try to touch God because this is God's plan for your life. So every divine backing you must be, in order to receive it, you must be on a course that God has for your life. And I'm telling you, there's a purpose for your life. There's a plan for your life. Some of you are walking in the direction of that plan for your life. And I'm telling you, when you are on, when you are on a course and a mission for God, God's got your back. Turn to two people and tell them, God's got your back. God's got your back. Amen. Here is the third benefit of divine direction. The, the third benefit of divine direction is found in Psalms 25 and 13. This is powerful. Psalms 25 and 13. Here's the third benefit. You will experience, just what we're talking about tonight, you will experience ease. Yeah. How many of you are ready for some ease in your life? Look at Psalms 25 and verse 13. Divine direction will cause ease to show up in, in your life. Psalms 25 and 13. You got it? All right, watch this. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Back up to verse 12. Let me show you this. Let's look at 12 and 13 together. He says, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. And watch what he says. His soul, that's up here. That's your mind, your will, your emotions. Your soul will dwell at ease. And I'm telling you right now, I just, I, I just want to speak this over your life. I don't know what's been worrying you. I don't know what's been weighing you down. I don't know what's been occupying your thinking. But I command your soul to dwell at ease. Somebody says, how does that happen? It happens when, you, when you're hungry to do the will of God for your life. It happens when you go before God and say, God, show me what you want me to do. I'm turning my, my will over to you. Show me what you want me to do. And then you just simply begin to walk and you begin to step. You put one foot in front of the other and where he leads you, you begin to follow. And you'll know it when you get there, praise God. But your soul dwelling at ease, that's a powerful thing. He says his seed 
shall inherit the earth when your soul dwells at ease. There are a lot of people in these last days, especially what's going on right now, there's a lot of worried people in the world. But I tell you what, I declare world change.